And even places that do have core facilities, they maybe don't have the time to um, put you know, invest in training their users. Instilling the principles early on hopefully will give people a better grounding in cytometry, which will make everybody's experiments better. There'll be more rigor, reproducibility, time to results will be quicker. Understanding what the data means means you can be a lot more critical in evaluating your exper experiments. Hello, I am Emma May and I am here with Derek Davies, who's a cytometry consultant, and Rosie Clark, who is the manager of Flow Cytometry Facility at the University of Dundee. So, Rosie, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do and how you got to where you are? Um, so yes, I'm the manager of the Flow Cytometry Facility here at the University of Dundee. We're based in the School of Life Sciences, but we cover all the university and some smaller um, companies that are around the, the Dundee area as well. Um, so I've been a manager here for actually just over 20 years, but my whole career has been spent in flow cytometry. I actually did my PhD a long time ago, developing flow cytometry techniques. Um, to detect bacteria in food, actually. And really, flow cytometry has been the continuous vein as a postdoc, and then when I went into industry as well, and then back into the university sector. So it's been a long journey. And day to day, then, what, what does your job entail? So running the flow cytometry facility um, has lots of different aspects to it. Um, we help our users, we train all our users to become independent at using our flow cytometers within the facility. Um, we also provide a cell sorting service. So we um, do all our cell sorting for our customers, if you like. Um, and like I said, we train people, we help with the data analysis, the experimental design, all the way from the concept of an experiment all the way to the results at the very end. We're, we're always assisting people. I suppose your users are in a, a good position because they have you to help with, with the training, but not everybody has access to that. No, um, they don't have access to the sort of expertise that we have here. And even places that do have core facilities, they maybe don't have the time to um, put, you know, invest in training their users. So they would prefer to have um, access to training courses where they, you know, they can send their users knowing that they're going to learn about flow cytometry correctly rather than maybe looking at a few tutorials on the internet and getting the wrong end of the stick. Indeed, you're right. There's, there's a lot of information out there, not all of it uh, good information, not all of it well curated. If you were to look at some of the basics of flow cytometry, it could come across as very simple, you know, but the when you get more in depth and things start to get a bit more complicated, it's really important that you understand the fundamental basics of how things, how that data is being generated and then what to do with that data once you've generated it. That's right. One of the reasons we've, um, we've called this course the fundamentals of flow cytometry is that the, the principles haven't really changed that much. Uh, and instilling the principles early on hopefully will give people a better grounding in cytometry, which will make everybody's experiments better. There'll be more rigor, reproducibility, time to results to be quicker, and so on. Yeah. I think that I have found this a bit um, more common today is in research, people are quite often focused on getting the result, getting the result, getting the result. But it's really important that people understand exactly where that data is coming from in order to critically review the data that they're getting out and also to understand how the data was generated and therefore troubleshoot any problems that they may have. So it's um, thinking back to the 90s and when you were working on a homemade machine, what are things that perhaps you learned along the way that um, you may have learned quicker if you'd have had courses like the ones you're offering now? When flow cytometry really took off and started to become very, very multi-parameter and you've got all the issues with compensation and the correct controls that you need to develop in order to create a good experiment. I think that side of things is where um, it would have been of help to have had 
this type of course available to me. When things start to get complicated, that's when you really need to have somebody to help. And what do you think then the benefits of a course like this offers a person? I think giving a the grounding in the um, the background of flow cytometry, understanding how flow cytometers work, understanding what it really is that you're measuring, what you can measure and what you can't measure, what you are measuring, um, understanding how the data is generated helps you understand how what the data means, and it will all in understanding what the data means means you can be a lot more critical in evaluating your exper experiments not just a one-way thing it's very much a you know an interactive two-way course um, not just the delivery of an online lecture that concludes our interview with rosie clark who is a flow cytometry manager at the university of dundee